Last September, we went out to Seattle for Hooniverse to drive the all new, well, all new being relative, the, the Golf All Track. It's a new model for them, right? We liked it a lot. Thought it was good, but hey, it's a Volkswagen Golf. We like Volkswagen Golfs at its heart, right? So now that we've had it for a few days here in our natural environment of Metro Detroit, do we still think it's a pretty good vehicle and good value for money? That's what we find out on this episode of rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So when we drove the Alltrack originally, we liked it. I mean, it's a Golf, right? The, the, the Golf is one of our favorite cars in the segment. And we like wagons. We like wagons so much, we actually own one. But is it a gimmick that Volkswagen said, okay, we're going to raise this, uh, the Volkswagen Golf wagon six tenths of an inch, throw some body cladding on it, call it, you know, give it the four motion system and call it a crossover. Well, Yes and no. So is it essentially the same vehicle? Yes, it is actually. But the fact that America's obsession with crossovers has deemed this that by raising it a little bit, by throwing some body cladding on it, by giving it four motion, uh, all of a sudden sales are way up on this vehicle. You look at wagon versus all track and it's a pretty dramatic shift scratching our head as to why, but we'll get to that in a minute. Fundamentally, this is still an awesome vehicle. It rides and drives like a Golf, which is great. The flexibility of a wagon is fantastic. Yes, you're six tenths up, six tenths of an inch up in ride height, but yeah, you don't really notice it that much. Would we like to set a little lower? Sure, but that's a personal thing. So the overall flexibility of a wagon is still fantastic. It's why we like wagons. We were able to go to Ikea and load up some stuff and not even have to put the back seat down. Uh, we did just to take this picture you're seeing right here. We were able to go to Costco and load up, no problem. We even went to the Home Depot and got some stuff. And here's a two by four uh, pegboard piece that we bought for as we're redoing the, the workshop. And uh, as you can see, yes, we had to put the back seat down, but there's a ton of space back there. The flexibility of wagons is great. The low ro load height is the best, right? The dog can get in and out without having to use the steps like we do in a crossover. Wagons are the best. They just are. Now, you've raised this ride height, you know, six tenths of an inch. Does that make a big difference? Eh, you know, not really, honestly. It's, it's more of a marketing thing, honestly. Really, it is. So you raise the ride height six tenths of an inch. Uh, you throw some body cladding on it. You uh, put four motion into the system here. And all of a sudden, sales go through the roof. Well, relatively speaking, but sales have really picked up on this vehicle just by that little bit. For whatever reason, a wagon, it's essentially the same thing. But, you know, America's obsession with crossovers, you, you fake it up a little bit, and all of a sudden it's acceptable. Now, faking it up, I'll put in air quotes because uh, while we were in Seattle, we did take this off-road. We did do a little, you know, off-roading and a little crawling. Um, you know, is this thing going to be a rock crawler? No, uh, mostly because it has no skid plates, which is a big miss because Volkswagen does market this thing as being able to go to off-road. There is an off-road mode in, the, in this vehicle. Uh, but there's no skid plates. It really needs it. Even like the Forester and the Outback for Subaru have those. And you wouldn't think you need them, but they're, they'd be a good thing to have. It's a $10 part. Volkswagen should throw it on for the next model year. Inside, this is a Golf, which is a good thing. Materials are very good. Um, at this price point, it's okay. We're starting to push it a little bit for what the materials could be. But that's because this is a fully spec'd out model. Don't really have any complaints 
other than, yes, it has heated seats. Would we like to have cooled seats? Yes, but again, that's a particular thing. But at fully loaded, this price, you know, other models, similar, they they, they have them and, and it's nice. But again, it's leather, it's black, it's beginning of summer here. Uh, it's, you know, 90 degrees or almost 90 degrees and 60% humidity. Cooled seats are a nice thing. One option this vehicle does have is the Fender audio system. If you care about music even a little bit, make sure you get the package where you can get the Fender audio. It's a big difference between the bass system. Now the bass system is okay. We just had it in a, uh, in a GTI and it's fine, but the level up from that to this Fender is substantial. Uh, and it's not just the subwoofer, it's the clarity of the system. It's, everything is just a little bit fuller from vocals to instrumentation, highs, lows, everything in between. The Fender Audio is a good option to pick. And as I said, if you like your music even a little bit, you should get that one. So we mentioned this vehicle has different driving modes. There's normal, there's sport, which is what we've had it in most of the time. There's a custom where you can adjust things and then there's an off-road mode. Now we say we've kept it in sport most of the time and it's true because uh, it firms things up nicely without being obnoxious. And we've actually found it a little more comfortable than the standard mode. So odd, but sure, why not? It's, it's good. Now the off-road mode we tested out in Seattle and it actually works. You, you put it, especially if you're driving on a dirt road, like if you're on a long dirt road and you can drive at some speed, the extra confidence that the electronics give you, you can really put the hammer down on some back dirt roads uh, with the four motion and with the electronics involved. The grip is amazing. Even with these standard sort of continental uh, all season tires, it's really good. Uh, you'll be surprised. So fuel economy here is uh, 22 city, uh, 30 on the highway and 25 combined we've had pretty much spot on those numbers in our few days with the vehicle. So I think you can pretty much count on that. It's the nice thing of this versus a, a crossover vehicle. Uh, most crossovers, you're even at this, this size, the C segment size, you're going to be lucky to get uh, 26, 27 on the highway on a good day. You're combined to probably be closer to 21, 22. So it's a pretty substantial bump in fuel economy over a traditional crossover or SUV. And you have all the functionality and probably more so uh, as wagons tend to be much more space efficient than crossovers. So the model we have here, and I'm just checking to make sure we get everything correct here, is the 17 Golf Alltrack TSI SEL with four motion. That's the full spec, right? Uh, base price 32,890 on it. It has one option on it for $2,000, and that is the SEL driver assistance package, which is uh, lights and you know some higher intensity lights, Xeon lights, the lights that turn with you at night, and the parking assist package. It's two grand. Eh, sure, why not? Um, two grand for the lighting package. Okay, that'd be a bit much. The parking package. If you like those things, great. If you don't, skip it. You won't miss anything, really. The the standard lighting in these things is is, is pretty pretty good to begin with. So all in, uh, with destination, we're at thirty five seven zero five. Is that a lot of money for a golf? Yes, but your friendly Volkswagen dealer will probably cut you a deal. Also, most people aren't buying, they're leasing, and so there'll probably be some very attractive lease packages on this, probably at about 250 to 320 a month. And for that pricing, this all day. Um, one of the things we were joking about when, we, when this was dropped off for us is, how does this compare to our 10-year-old Mercedes uh, E350 4Matic wagon? And the answer is yes and no, um, meaning that in some ways this is actually better. In other ways, the Mercedes is much better, but it's even as a 10 year old car, it's still a, you know, a Mercedes, it's still a Mercedes. So the luxury aspect is, is better. The materials are better. The ride is actually pretty close. Um, there's more room because it's a bit of a, it's a next, sex, next segment size up. 
but the performance on this thing is, might be a little better than the, than our Mercedes wagon. Um, so that said, Mercedes wagon or this? Well, it all depends. Are you willing to put up with a 10 year old German car out of warranty? Okay, you can pick one of those up for about nine, 10 grand. If you want a warranty, well then this is actually a really good option. So overall, Volkswagen all track. Is it a gimmick? Honestly, yes it is. That's not to say it doesn't have off-road chops because it does, it's capable off-road. And it's a bit sad and a bit of a sad commentary on America and the world today when you can raise the ride height you know, six tenths of an inch and throw some body cladding on it, all wheel drive. It's just, it's substantially the same vehicle, but all of a sudden now it's acceptable. Um, if you don't need four wheel drive and 95% of you who are watching this do not, the front wheel drive is more than fine. Get some winter tires. You'll save yourself uh, money on the purchase and fuel economy, maybe even some insurance costs as well. And you'll have the same vehicle It'll do exactly the same things unless you need to go off-road for whatever reason. But should you buy this versus any crossover SUV in the segment? Yeah, honestly, this is pretty much better than any crossover we've driven in this segment. Um, but then again, we're biased towards wagons.